Okay, in this video, let's have a look at the integral, the definite integral, sorry, the indefinite integral, or the antiderivative of tan squared of x by sine to the fourth power of x dx. Now, one way to tackle this problem is with trigonometric identities. So we'll be using this approach. I'm sure there are other approaches, but for these even powers, it appears to me that the most efficient approach is with trigonometric identities. But if you think of any more efficient approaches, please comment in the comment section below this video. I certainly love to hear your thoughts. So let's go ahead. So with the integrand tan squared of x by sine squared of x, I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity where tan squared of x can be expressed as the secant squared of x minus one and this comes from rearranging the identity that 1 plus the tan squared of x is equal to the secant of squared of x. Now sine to the fourth power of x, I'm going to break that into sine squared of x by sine squared of x. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this purple, so let's change color. Okay, so this is simply reducing the power here into the product of two square powers, so that's pretty straightforward. This sine squared term here, let's use the other Pythagorean identity that cos squared of x plus the sine squared of x is equal to one. So I'm going to write this one as one minus the cos squared of x. And let's bring everything else down. So let's bring down what we have here, sec squared of x minus one. And let's bring down this sine squared term here. Okay, let's change colors again. What I'm going to do now is to expand these parentheses. And in the same way as we would do binomial expansion. So we have sec squared of x by one minus sec squared of x by cos squared of x. So that takes care of that one. Then we have negative one by one, which is minus one. And finally we have plus cos squared of x. Okay. And copy down the remaining sine squared term. Okay, now this six squared by cos squared. Six squared we should know is equal to one over cos squared. So it's negative one over cos squared by cos squared. So in effect, these would actually cancel each other out. So they cancel out to be minus one. We have another minus one. So minus one minus one gives us minus two. And let's write down the remaining term. So we have sec squared at the front plus cos squared at the back. And that's all times sine squared of x. Bring this one down again. Okay, what I'm going to do now is to multiply this sine squared term into the parentheses, or into the parenthesis. Yeah, it's plural, isn't it? So we have parentheses here, not just one parenthesis. But anyway, uh, let's do that expansion. So we have sec squared by sine squared minus two by sine squared plus cos squared by sine squared. All right, so this front term here, we recognize again that sec squared is one over cos squared. So we have one over cos squared by sine squared. So effectively we have sine squared over cos squared. And that turns that into a tan squared of x. What I'm going to do with this sine squared term is use the half angle identity. So we can express sine squared as one minus cosine of two x divided by two. And we still have the two at the front, the negative two at the front. This term I'm going to combine using the double angle identity. So that is cos of x by sine of x, or two times that is equal to 
sine of 2x. So conversely, cosine by sine is a half of that. So before we apply the double angle formula, let's write this as cosine x by sine x all squared. So we have plus the all squared and then we have the a half of the sine of 2x inside of that. Okay, just to be clear, there is, is a set of brackets and parentheses around the 2x here as well. Okay, let's simplify this expression a bit further. The 2 here and the 2 here cancel, and let's expand this negative 1 here into the parentheses. So we have minus 1 plus cos of 2x. We'll copy down the tan squared term. And let's reapply this square term into the brackets here. So 1 half squared is 1 quarter, and we have sine squared of 2x. And with this sine squared term, I'm going to apply the half angle formula again. So this sine squared I'll express as 1 minus cos of 2 by 2x, which equals cos of 4x all over 2 by the 1 quarter out the front. Okay, let's simplify that. So we have here 1 eighth minus one eighth of the cosine of 4x plus cos squared x, sorry, cos of 2x plus minus 1 here. Let's combine this minus 1 and 1 eighth together and write that on the end. So minus 1 plus 1 eighth becomes minus 7 eighths. And we copy down the tan squared term at the front. All right, so the integral of tan squared by sine to the fourth power of x dx is now equal to the integral of tan squared of x plus cos 2x minus 1 eighth cos 4x minus 1 seventh. And of course, because we have pluses and minuses between all the terms, I can write this entire integral as four separate integrals. So we have the integral of tan squared of x dx plus the integral of cos 2x dx minus an eighth by the integral of cos 4x dx minus the integral of, well, minus one seventh, sorry, minus seven eighths of the integral of dx. Okay, so these are all separate integrals that we can easily find the integral of. The integral of tan squared x is simply equal to tan of x minus x. And if you're wondering where this result came from, I will link a video now to, to how we came up with this result. The integral of the cosine of 2x is well, cosine integrates to sine. The 2x inside remains, but we have to divide by the differential, sorry, the derivative of what's inside here. So it's divided by 2 for the third integral. Sorry, it's a bit messy and compact here. The coefficient 1 8 stays at the front. Again, cosine integrates to sine. The 4x remains the same inside of the uh, sine term, but we have to divide again by the derivative of the 4x, which is 4. And of course, for the final integral, the negative 7 eighth stays as it is. dx integrates simply to x. Okay, so all that's left to do is to tidy up this line here. So we have tan of x plus a half of sine of 2x minus 1 on 16, sorry, minus 1 on 32 of sine of 4x. I'm going to combine this minus x here with this minus 7 eighths of an x to become minus 15 on 8 times x. And of course, we have forgotten the integration constant c, must not forget that. So thus the integration of tan squared of x by sine to the fourth power of x 
dx is equal to 10 of x plus a half of sine of 2x minus 1 32nd of the sine of 4x minus 15 on 8x plus c. As I said, if you think of a different approach, let me know. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, please like and share it on social media with your study mates. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the comments and ask them below. Okay, now until next time, best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you on the next video.